Okay, let's go on. Um, Christina Ajibola Abiri. Christina. Is it your pronunciation? Yes. Day? No? <laughs> what impact will the murder of an ex Russian spy have on British and Russian? Relations. Russians having said today they won't allow the Met to interview, or yes, this week, interview anybody in connection with uh, Litvinenko's death, and uh, they certainly won't allow people to be extradited for prosecution here, even though this was a British citizen murdered on British soil. Um, Ruth Kelly. Well, it shouldn't have an impact, and I know that the Prime Minister regularly raises issues to do with human rights with the Russians, and they've signed up to the, uh, to the Convention on Human Rights. <coughs> Uh, so, you know, you expect that to be held. So, as I understand it, and of course these are difficult issues because there's a current police investigation uh, going on, um, we are getting cooperation, and the fact is that obviously has to continue as we go forward. But hang on, a, a, a country with whom we have these relations says they won't allow the British government, or no, sorry, the British government, British courts, mm. to extradite somebody on a charge of murder, and you say it has no effect on the relationship between the two well, countries. Well, I understand that there is cooperation uh, on the intelligence side between the two countries at the moment, uh, and of course this has to be tested, um, but, you know, the, the co cooperation is there. I very much hope that, that over the next few weeks and months that continues. Do you think that they should release people that the uh, British courts may wish to prosecute? Well, and extradite them if, you know, if, if it's, the it's, application is it, made. It's difficult to get too involved in this, given that there's an ongoing investigation and that anything I say could be used uh, in that investigation. But I, obviously, I can't see in what any you could say that would affect In it. any circumstance, uh, you would expect a country to cooperate. You would expect cooperation. And, and to All right. cooperate fully. Martin Amis? <coughs> well, I, it seems that what the Russian state is doing, and I, I think you know, such a a, a murder with such an enormous um, you know, scar tissue and such a vapor trail is it's um, it seems that what the Russian state is doing is, is, is going back to having the heavy center to keep the whole thing going and, and Putin is putting his head down and just heading towards great power status and, and very little else is mattering to, to the state and they know that whatever noises we make and diplomatic noises we make, they have the power, the energy weapon on us. And it's, it's brazenly saying, this is a, a message sent out to all other possible troublemakers that you're going to die in agony, and, and we don't care. So do you, you blame Putin for it? I mean, well, why, why should he object if, it's, if he's got nothing to do with it? It's the Russian state. It, uh, they, mm -hmm. they poisoned Solzhenitsyn himself, um, I think, mm -hmm. in the 80s. Um, he nearly, nearly died. This is the way they do it. And, and a, a, a sort of... You're saying this was a state assassination or murder? Yeah. Th and there's a, there's a sort of Asiatic coldness that comes over them. It's always been in doubt whether Russia is European or, or Asian. But this is the Asian side, mm -hmm. and here we see it. Jeff Randall. I know it sounds awful, David, but I find it quite difficult to take this story seriously because whenever I read the details, I, I always feel that I've picked up some trashy airport <coughs> novel. Uh, you know, a, a sort of a rerun of, of a James Bond story. Uh, radioactive planes, people being poisoned in London, it's extraordinary. I think what we can conclude from this is that uh, Putin is definitely in the running for the title of baddest man on the planet. And he's having a pretty good go at it. And I do think it's a wake-up call for a lot of British companies that uh, over the last 10 years have seen Russia as a bit of an El Dorado, a place to pour money because there's lots of cash. Well, you know, when there's lots of cash, uh, there's normally a risk attached, and I think we're, we're seeing that risk now. If I were executives at BP or some of the drinks companies, I'd be looking for a posting elsewhere. The, the woman here, right? Um, if the Russian government is found to be implicated in the murder of Alexander Litvinenko, um, do you think justice will be fairly served? What are the alternatives? What's going to be done about it if it does go straight back to the Russian government? David Davis. Well, uh, the reason we raised this issue in the House of Commons what, Monday before last was because I was concerned that the diplomatic concerns would come ahead of the concerns of justice. And somebody's been murdered on the streets of London, and I think everybody now accepts it's murder, in a cruel, protracted, vicious way, almost made an example of in public. And so the first thing that must be served is not diplomatic niceties, it must be justice in our country. And that's, the, that's what we've got to make clear, not just for Litvinenko, uh, although of course he's the most important, 
man in this, the most important family in this, but also for all of the other Russian and other refugees in Britain who come here expecting to be safe. And that's, the, that's I'm afraid, the primary consideration from my point of view. Now, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's, the theories are two theories. One that is some sort of gangsters or, 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 or opposing groups. Uh, the other is that it's a state assassination. Uh, what uh, strikes me as extraordinary is how sensitive and almost Cold War old-fashioned the Russian state has been over this. The idea that you can't interview somebody in, in prison because he's a Russian state prisoner strikes me as just plumb ridiculous. Uh, the idea that we can't extradite somebody unless we swap him for one of Russia's enemies or one of uh, Putin's enemies in Britain is just plain ridiculous. And I'm afraid we should make that plain to the Russian government because I have to say, yet again, justice comes before diplomacy. Do you, think the, uh, do you think the government, whose view Ruth Kelly expressed, uh, is wrong not to be tougher and more open about this? Well, to be fair to them, I mean, John Reid, when he answered, he answered, he answered a, uh, what's called an urgent question, a sort of statement in the House uh, last Monday and then again on Thursday, he actually said twice, because I asked him twice, that uh, the, the police will go wherever the evidence takes them. And I think, you know, if the government means that, then I applaud it. The, the man there. Right. Will George Bush help us now? Would George Bush help us? How, yeah. how, how? Show his appreciation and help us interfere with the Russians. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mar Mariella. Well, I'm not sure that George Bush has got any more sway with the Russians than we have, to tell you the truth. I mean, the only thing that strikes me, and you know, everything that's been said about it is probably that could be said has been said, but, but there is a really macabre, swaggering arrogance about it. And there's also something really, really unpleasant about the way in which this man was murdered. Because it wasn't to do with killing him. It's a warning. It's some kind of really, you know, deeply considered and, and then acted upon chain of events that, that really sends a shudder down my spine. The woman up there in black. Uh, Ruth Kelly, just going back to what you said, how dare you defend Russia's human rights record? They are the grossest, they are the grossest uh, violation of human rights in the whole of the Council of Europe. And if they, do, at the end of the day, this boils down to the murder of a British citizen. If Russia does have any criminals, in, uh, if they are harboring anyone who is involved in this, then it will be a violation of their convention rights not to extradite yeah. that person to, the, to Britain to be trialled in a British court. Can, can, I, can I just respond yep. to that? I wasn't in any way defending anyone's human rights record here. What I said is, if there, when there are human rights considerations, then those are things that you know, we raise with the Russians and wouldn't hesitate to do that. And, you know, um, John Reid, the Home Secretary, did make it clear that if the was any evidence uh, to be followed, then of course the police would do that, and justice has to come first. Okay. Uh, take one more point. The woman in pink there, and then we must stop. Do you not think this heralds the re-emergence of the KGB, and there's not a lot anybody can do about it in this country? Anybody want to take that on? <coughs> KGB. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. No takers. <laughs> Look behind you. Yes. Okay. Well, enough said. All right, we'll stop. We've come to the end of our time anyway. I'm sorry about that. Come back in January. Um, it's, uh, it's all for this week. Um, if you want to continue this debate, go to our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash question time, and you can do that. Uh, but I'd just like to thank our panel here and all of you who came here to take part. Um, we're off rather early um, for Christmas. We're in Dartford on January the 11th uh, with a, a strong panel. If you can come to Dartford and take part, uh, the Lord Chancellor, Charles Faulkner, is going to be there, George Osborne, the Shadow Chancellor, Charles Kennedy, former leader of the Liberal Democrats, uh, the historian David Starkey, and Claire Short, who was a Labour Cabinet Minister, of course, and is now an independent MP. And the week after that, it's Northampton. Now, either Dartford or Northampton, 09011114411 is the number to call. The details are on the screen there. Uh, you can email questions in uh, to us that you'd like to hear put in Dartford and carry on the debate. Uh, it sounds a bit early to be saying it, but um, a happy Christmas. <laughs> and, um, and I hope you join us again in the new year. Good night from London.